In this module, we shall be looking at applications of the contract of Salam and applications of Islamic mode of finance of Salam. As we have been emphasizing that there are differences between Islamic contracts and Islamic modes of financing. Islamic contracts are just one contract at a time. So when we refer to the contract of Salam, we refer to the Salam sale as a contract. When we refer to Salam as a mode of finance, then we are referring to an arrangement which comprises Salam as a main component. However, there are some other arrangements and contracts and agreements around it. Let's look at Salam and its applications in Islamic banking and finance. Salam can be used in a number of situations and in a number of markets. The classical use of Salam is in agriculture financing. In fact, this was the earliest intention of the acceptance of Salam as a contract in Islam. Salam has also been used as a liquidity management tool, especially for allowing Islamic banks to manage their liquidity. And in Islamic capital market, we find quite a few sukuk based on salam. All these applications of Islamic applications of sukuk in Islamic banking and finance would be discussed in due course. But let us start with a recap on sukuk. What is a recap on salam? What is uh, Salam? Salam is a sale contract in which one party buys a commodity and of course the other party sells it. The seller receives the price upfront to deliver the commodity on a certain date in future. So it is a deferred delivery sale contract. Salam seller here receives the price, Salam price PS now to deliver the commodity X on a future date T1 to the Salam buyer. So, this is the basic structure of a Salam contract. Although this wasn't an intention of the Salam contract, however, when we look at the contract of Salam in some detail, we find that there is an element of optionality built in it. Let us look at this diagram. Here on the horizontal axis we have time and on the vertical axis we have price. PS is the Salam price and PM0 is the market price at the time of execution of Salam contract. Salam price is normally less than the prevailing market price. It is not necessarily the case, but it is quite understandable if the Salam price is less than the prevailing market price at the time of the execution of the Salam contract because this is paid upfront. So, so, there is a difference between the prevailing market price and the Salem price. Now, the Salem price which is paid upfront, this could be seen as a liquidity benefit. The Salem seller has to deliver the commodity in future but it receives the money, the price now, this is actually a cash benefit which the Salam seller receives at the time of executing the Salam sale contract. What is the price of this liquidity? 
the price of liquidity is the difference between the market price and the sell and price. Because sell and price is lower than the market price. In order to receive this liquidity benefit, the sell and seller actually gets a price which is less than the market price. The difference between the two could be considered as the price of liquidity. Now, the actual price of the liquidity is determined in future when the commodity is going to be delivered. If at that time the market price of the commodity delivered at T1 is this PM1, then the actual price of the liquidity would be the difference between PM1 and PS. So that is a kind of loss which the seller, seller incurs when this happens. Now, there is a definite incentive for seller, seller to default on delivery at T1, the future date of delivery, if the price of the commodity has gone up significantly. And this is what we mean by optionality. If the price of the commodity has gone up significantly, then it makes sense for the sell -em seller not to deliver the commodity, i.e. default. If this was possible, sell -em was a very good option contract. However, it is not allowed in a Salem contract to default. If someone defaults on the delivery of the commodity at T1, the Salem buyer can always take the Salem seller to the court and the court would decide in favor of Salem buyer. Salem buyer would, in most cases, get the benefit of the opportunity cost of the delivery, i.e., if Salem seller does not deliver the commodity at T1, then the court may say, may ask the Salem seller to compensate the Salem buyer for the loss. Because of this possibility of court case, the Salem seller is not in a position or the Salem seller cannot renege on the contract, i.e. he or she would not be able to breach the contract. If this was possible to default, then Salem is definitely a very good example of commodity options. Salem can not be used for buying and selling of shares of listed companies because this is not allowed as per the Sharia standards of accounting and auditing organization for Islamic financial institution, Salam can be used for purchase and sale of commodities and some other assets which are eligible for this kind of trade. So this is a kind of introduction to Salam. After this, we would be looking into different structures which use Salem as an Islamic mode of finance.